Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein Saga and today I would like to show you one more game from Crazy Ostende 1906 tournament from first stage of the tournament. So we have Olgich Duras and according to the chess metrics he's ranking 2646 and he is slightly better than Akiba Rubinstein who is only 2638 at that time and who was Olgich Duras the leading chess master and interesting thing but he was a very very strong player because he has the plus score against Richard Teichmann, David Janowski, Karl Schlechter, Aaron Nimzowicz and also level scores with Zygbert Tarasz and Geza Marozzi. So definitely very strong player. However, against Akiba Rubinstein, something was wrong with his plate because we have 14 recorded games and uh, Olgich Duras won only two, draw two and lost 10 games against uh, Akiba Rubinstein. Pretty amazing stuff. And uh, without further ado, let's jump into the game. So uh, Rubinstein open with d4. We have e6, c4, d5, knight c3, knight f6 and now bishop on g5. So a very standard uh, queen's gambit declined, knight b on d7 and now e3, c6, Knight on f3, bishop on e7, bishop e2 and now castle by black, castle by white and knight on e4 very early attacking the bishop and uh, white of course can exchange the bishop on e7 but Rubinstein preferred to play bishop on f4 saving this bishop and now we have f5 so uh, black created the stone wall this very very solid structure but of course with the weaknesses on the dark squares uh, and here Rubinstein play knight on e5 now we have knight takes on e5 bishop takes on e5 bishop f6 challenging the bishop and now f4 by Rubinstein and this is what Rubinstein usually play against the stone wall he create his own stone wall so we have double stone wall and here bishop on d7 by Duras other plan could be for example b6 with the idea of bishop on b7 and then pushing this c5 pawn uh, however we have bishop on d7 here we have bishop on d3 by Rubinstein and now bishop on e7. So Olgich Duras is probably waiting what Rubinstein is gonna play and Rubinstein start to attack g4. So this is the way how he deal with this uh, stone wall. So he want to you know attack f5 and eliminate e6 and then do the same on the another side and then you will see what will happen. Uh, we have bishop on f6, so Duras uh, coming back to f6, inviting for g5. Uh, Rubinstein, of course, didn't go for that. We have g takes on f5, e takes on f5, and now rook on c1, developing the rook. Uh, we have bishop on e6. Now, bishop, of course, have to support the pawns, uh, because e6 uh, pawn was eliminated. And now we have c takes on d5. Uh, knight on c3 first, now uh, b takes on c3 and now c takes on d5 is quite okay in this position. However, Olgich Duras set up a little trap and he play bishop goes to d5. So is it possible to take f5 pawn? Uh, actually is not and probably is not for the reason uh, most of the people see uh, because if bishop takes on f5 yes bishop takes on e5 with the attack on the bishop however f takes on e5 and the rook defending uh, the bishop and the continuation queen on g5 queen on g4 so everything looks good but after queen on e3 with check an attack on the rook on c1 and this beautiful bishop slicing uh, the longest diagonal 
uh, white is actually losing. So rook f2 and winning the, the rook and of course winning the game. So uh, definitely bishop on f5 is impossible to play. This is why we have c4 by Akiba Rubinstein and now bishop on e6. So bishop of course has to retreat. This is why c takes on d5 maybe would be uh, slightly better, but it, it's just a matter of taste. Uh, we have rook on c2, so bringing the rook on the second rank, it's quite important as the king can be uh, vulnerable if black uh, actually decide to attack on the king side. Uh, now we have bishop takes on e5 and now d takes on e5. From the, you know, strategic point of view, uh, f takes on e5 would be more solid, keeping the, the pawns together. However, queen on g5 actually winning the pawn. So uh, king h1, queen e3 winning the pawn and that would be uh, very comfortable for black. Uh, this is why d takes on e5 have to be played and white actually have uh, two weaknesses. We have queen on e7 and now c5. Very interesting move with the very, very deep plan of Akiba Rubinstein. And it looks like it's very illogical because it gives this beautiful square, uh, which black, of course, can take and then double the rooks on the, on the d file and uh, what can be more beautiful in the chess game. Uh, we have queen on f7 by black. And now queen on e2, bishop on d5 as planned, and now white play h3, uh, making some space for the king uh, just in the case, because this bishop looks pretty dangerous. So it's always good, you know, to have some, some square for the king, uh, you know, just in, in case that's prophylactic. Uh, and here Duras play king on h8. Uh, just to get away from this diagonal as the uh, bishop actually can go to c4. It can be, it's not very dangerous now, but it can be inconvenient in some cases. However, black should play something more active like b5. And b5, because for now uh, this c pawn and this e pawn creating a very strong d6 and d6 is a very important square which Akiba Rubinstein gonna fight for. It doesn't look like he gonna do that but you know uh, can you imagine what's gonna happen? So in this case it would be very dangerous for white to leave these two pawns against this single pawn okay? So this is why c takes on b6 probably would have to be played by Rubinstein a takes on b6 and now bishop on c4 rook f on d8 and everything is fine with the black position uh, probably that they just equalize and then can continue playing however as i said king on h8 was played and now bishop on c4 um, as planned we have rook a on d8 so bringing uh, the rook of course to the um, open file uh, and now bishop on d5 and here black should just play rook on d5 and now after rook on d1 just double the rooks and it's difficult to imagine how white gonna you know win d6 now black has full control of on the on the d file okay so um, that's probably what should be played however we have queen on d5 by olg duras which is still okay we have queen on c4, challenging the queen, and now Dura start to play very, very passive. He play queen on d7. Uh, it's really not great move, uh, queen on d7, very passive, and then white actually can try to fight uh, for this d6. And now you will see how Rubinstein did it. Uh, what black should play probably is queen on c4. And after rook on c4, then rook f7, bringing a defender to b7 weakness. And now after rook on b1, g5. 
and it's very complex uh, position here it looks like very simple but it's very difficult if actually white uh, led black uh, to take on f5 it looks everything fine but these rooks um, on these open files can be very very dangerous so uh, white would have to be very careful and f takes on g5 would be a more possible probably and then rook on e8 with attack on this uh, isolated pawns and now uh, rook c on b4 king on g7 for example rook b7 and now rook e5 and king f2 defending uh, rook c5 and the game could continue with it would be probably a draw also another option here would be immediately g5 okay this is also possible and for example queen on d5 rook on d5 rook b1 and now g takes on f4 so i will show you uh, this another option with the open files what could happen this is of course uh, also probably a draw so uh, e takes on f4 rook on g8 king f2 and now rook d4 attacking the f4 uh, so king on e3 rook e4 king f3 now rook a4 uh, and it looks like already gonna be quite dangerous for white uh, of course first rook on b7 and now h5 e6 h4 uh, rook on d2 now bringing the rook to the seven rank and checkmating that would be uh, really great however rook on g3 with check king on e2 and now black don't need to gi give opportunity to white to play some dangerous moves like this so rook on g2 king d1 rook g1 king c2 and now rook a2 with check rook b2 exchanging the rooks uh, and for example king g7 rook d7 with check king f6 e7 king f7 rook a7 and now rook g3 <laughs> rook c7 and for example rook h3 rook c6 king e7 rook h6 and that would be probably a draw because the kings can't enter the game as these rooks you know uh, <laughs> just not letting the kings to enter the game so this could be possible i'm just showing you the some crazy lines uh, but in this position of course uh, queen on c4 would be the easiest uh, g5 probably would be maybe more crazy but uh, also probably just drawish queen on d7 is passive and now rubinstein start to fight for d6 square and look how he did it so first rook on b1 putting the pressure on b7 we have queen on e7 uh, making a space for the rooks and now king h2 so bringing the king for the safety rook d5 and it still doesn't look like you know d6 gonna be taken correct okay so let's see queen on b4 more pressure to b7 so rook has to retreat to d7 also rook on f7 could be possible but then uh, the eight rank weakness it's not really comfortable situation for black so rook on d7 and now rook b on b2 you see the plan now so the queen not only attack on b7 but also controls d2 and now the rook can come on d2 uh, we have rook f on d8 rook on d2 as planned and now this is the last chance for black actually to get the probably equal game uh, just exchange all the rooks and now play king on g8 and after queen on d6 king f7 and it's difficult to find the way for white how to progress yes there is some uh, past pawn here uh, but it's really really not easy as black still can you know get some advantage on the queen side so not really simple uh, you know for white to to do anything here actually it's uh, probably dead draw 
so that was the last chance however here we have h6 very passive move and now rook on d6 that's the strongest move in the position and what black can do is they have to choose so they're gonna have more and more passive or take this rook but then these pawns would be you know unstoppable so it's it's impossible to play so we have rook on g8 but it's difficult to show any other uh, move so for example b6 c takes on b6 a takes on b6 rook on d7 queen d7 queen b6 and white have one extra pawn and probably uh just slowly uh, winning and grinding uh, to victory in this game so we have rook on g8 and now queen on d4 uh, so attacking the rook uh, for uh, one more time rook on c7 giving up on the d file so as you remember with the bishop on d5 and the rooks uh, on the on the open d file black had you know total control on the d file however now look at the position rubinstein remaneuvered his pieces and now he controls uh, d files pretty amazing stuff here uh, we have rook on g2 and that's pretty interesting maybe queen on c4 is the plan and uh, because then this would be very serious threat that checkmate is coming because uh, if the rook is taken then that would be a checkmate so a uh, pretty inconvenient stuff here uh, so we have a uh, king on h7 preventing and now a4 by rubinstein so his plan actually is to lock the queen side and then win in the center so if he can play a5 then you know uh, black has nothing to do on the queen side this is why uh, olgic duras try to counter with b6 but of course it's uh, with the cost of the pawn so we have c takes on b6 a takes on b6 and now queen b6 and now c5 creating the the past pawn by his own so olgic duras uh, can be happy for a very short time because now we have rook on c6 okay so blocking the access to the pawn uh, we have rook takes on c6 queen on c6 and now duras play g5 so a counter attacking on the king side he has nothing more to do uh, and here we have rook on b2 by rubinstein so now this is quite serious threat uh, that would be a disaster for black pinning the queen and winning the queen so uh, olgic duras can't of course play something like rook on g7 rook on g7 is losing because rook on b6 and now h6 is just lost it can't be defended so uh, very very bad this is why uh, olgic duras very sadly but he has to give up another pawn so we have queen on d8 and queen c5 uh, and now uh, two pawns up so uh, akiba rubinstein it's just a matter of technique actually olgic duras uh, could resign the game but he play a couple more moves so we have g takes on f4 e takes on f4 and now queen on d3 actually creating some threats of you know uh, checkmating uh, so white of course have to be still very careful queen on f2 uh, defending and now rook on g7 we have uh, a5 so past pawn must be pushed of course queen a3 attacking this past pawn rook a2 attacking the queen and defending the the past pawn and now queen on b3 rook e2 now supporting uh, e pawn and now queen on d3 so keeping an eye on the a6 just to prevent the pushing because if this pawn can be pushed then of course can be pushed also uh, to a7 as it's supported uh, by the queen uh, we have rook on e3 attacking the queen so queen c4 still staying on this diagonal and now rook on e1 we have queen on e6 now uh, blocking the pawn but also uh, keeping an eye on uh, a6 and now rook on e2 rook on g8 rook on d2 so now rook can come to d6 uh, attacking the queen and also supporting a6 
uh, that's quite nice idea. This is why we have queen on a6 by Olgic Duras, queen on b6 now, and now queen f1, still threatening some mating ideas here. Uh, so we have a queen on e3, but actually here uh, Akiba Rubinstein miss very forcing uh, way to exchange the pieces. Rook on d7, that could be just crashing because black has nothing to do. King h8 and now checkmate is coming. So black would have to play rook on g7. And after exchanging uh, the rooks, white also can exchange the queens and definitely win the game with this passed pawn. So a uh, pretty interesting idea. However, Rubinstein play queen on e3. So uh, defending from any mating ideas, controlling g3 and g1, and of course, uh, rook controls g2. We have queen on a6, and here Rubinstein just play e6. Uh, queen a5, so Olgic Duras win the pawn, but actually it's not enough because we have rook on d7 with check, rook g7, exchanging the rooks e7, and in this position Olgic Duras resigned the game. And he resigned because promotion is coming and he can do nothing about that, okay? He can't control uh, e8 with the king and the queen at the same moment. He can give one or two checks, but it doesn't really matter. White would promote anyway, and there is no any perpetual checks here. So uh, this is why Olgic Duras resigned the game. So that's all for today. And as always, I leave the link in the descriptions to the study created on leeches.org. Uh, so feel free to check all the lines. And if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike and if you don't want to miss uh, another parts of uh, Rubinstein Akiba Rubinstein saga uh, press subscribe smash the bell button and thanks for watching and see you in the next one